Welcome back to Mark Strong Edits. Today I'm going to walk you through my process for creating this simple text animation in Blender. Okay, we're going to start by selecting our cube. We're going to hit X on the keyboard and we're going to choose delete. We're going to hit 7 to go to our top view, shift A, and we're going to choose text. In the upper left hand corner, we're going to select object mode, change it to edit, and we're going to type in our text. I'm going to type in guardians for this example. Then I'm going to go back into object mode. We have our text settings on the side here, this little green A. I'm going to change my font. I already downloaded this font. The website I use is called dafont.com. I'll put that uh, link in the description. But we'll go ahead and finalize our text here. All right, and using the text panel on the side, the green A, I'm going to choose our geometry drop down and I'm going to increase the extrude amount. And then with our main text uh, selected, I'm going to hit Shift D on the keyboard to duplicate it. Then our text panel on the side here, I'm going to increase the bevel depth. I'm going to drop the resolution that way you get a nice sharp uh, bevel on the sides. And I'm going to pull this layer forward a little bit. I'll go ahead and turn that off. And on my original text layer, I'm going to increase the offset so the texts are wider. And so once I turn it on, it's like an additional bevel kind of on the edges of it. I'll go ahead and extrude our other text here as well. And so this is our, our basic look so far. All right, and then changing to our material view, I'm going to select our outer text layer. And then we have our material option on the right hand side here. I'm going to click new and I'm going to change our base material, change the name to gold. And then our base color, we have our color wheel here. So I'm just going to drag this to something closer to a gold. I might make this a little bit more yellow. And then if I scroll down just a little bit, I'm going to increase the metallic value a little bit. That's going to help it look a little more metal. I'm going to lower the roughness, that way you have a little bit more of a shine and increase the specular. Selecting our other text layer, I'm going to hit new, I'm going to call this one blue, and pretty much just follow the exact same steps that we did with the gold, except on the color wheel, we're going to choose blue. And I'm not going to adjust any other material settings, I'm going to leave this one the same, so I won't hike up the metallic value or anything. And for of the, I'm going to put that in gold as well. Alright, so now I'm going to open up a second window by dragging from the upper left hand corner, you get a little plus sign there. Or open up. I'm going to change our viewport on the left to our rendered view and I'm going to hit shift A and choose light and I'm going to duplicate this a couple times just by hitting shift D. I'm going to drag it over kind of throughout the entire duration of the text and I'll duplicate this one shine some light on the of the. I'm going to change this one to an area light that way it kind of lightens the entire text there instead of just a portion of it. And then I'm going to select our text options on the side here and I'm going to give of the just a slight bevel. It's going to give it some shine along the edges there, help it to stand out a little bit more. I'm going to select the four lights up at the top of the text layer and let me go into my rendered view here. I'm going to hit shift D and we're just going to move this down to the bottom. Perfect, that looks about right. And now we're ready to create our background. So I'm going to hit Shift A and we're going to choose Mesh and Plane. I'm going to use my Scale tool and we're going to scale this out, make it really, really wide. And then we're going to Edit Mode and I'm going to choose my Edge Select. And I'm going to hit this back edge and hit E to extrude. I'm just going to drag that all the way up, selecting our back edge. I'm going to choose the edge option at the top and bevel edges. We'll drag this out and with the middle mouse wheel we can scroll that up to add additional edges. So that looks about right. I'm going to go back into object mode. And at the top we have our object uh, drop down. I'm going to choose shade smooth so we don't have any sharp lines on our background. 
real quick, I'm going to select our camera and hit X to delete that. And I'm going to hit 1 to go into our front view, Shift A, and we're going to choose camera. And on the left hand window, I'll hit 0 to go into our camera view. And I'm just going to adjust this into frame. That's about perfect. We'll be animating this camera uh, pretty soon here, but for now I just want to set the scene. I'm going to adjust our background real quick. I'm going to hit new. We'll call this BG. And then the base color, I'm just going to make this a dark blue. All right, so now we're ready to start animating this camera. I'm gonna take us out of our render view here. With our camera selected, I'm gonna go into the animation view. I'll hit zero on the left screen to go to our camera view. Um, I'm gonna hit T on the keyboard to bring up our tool panel. And with our arrows, now I can move our camera. Down at the bottom, we have our auto key. I'm gonna enable that so we'll have automatic keyframes whenever we move. But for now, I'm gonna hit I and choose location rotation so we'll start with the camera just doing a basic movement we'll just be moving back so we're going to slowly move the camera outward to kind of give us a slow reveal of our logo that's about good i'm going to select these keyframes and hit g to move them just a little bit sooner that's about good and then I'm going to move just a little further back and I'm going to move the camera back a little bit more. That way we have sort of a faster reveal and then a slow pan backwards as it's revealing the logo. All right, and on the right hand side, we're going to choose the render button. I'm going to enable ambient occlusion. And I can just drag the screen out a little bit but I want to increase the distance for the ambient occlusion. This is going to give us some better shadows on our text. I'm going to enable bloom. This is going to give us better glow around the light that's bouncing off of our text. I'll increase it to about there. And I'm going to enable screen space reflections. And we're going to go ahead and turn on motion blur as well. And so that's going to kind of give us better results, a better overall look on our final export. We're going to set the endpoint for our animation to frame 80. That's about the length of my animation. And so that's all that's going to export when I do the final render. So just frame 1 to 80. I'm going to want to choose our output menu here. And then our start frame is 1, our end frame is 80. We want to make sure 100% that that matches up. Our output folder, I'm going to hit this folder icon. And a lot of times this automatically routes you to a temporary folder. So you want to make sure that you know where your animation is being exported to. So I hit the new folder button. I'm just going to call this 1. And I'm exporting my image sequences into folder 1. So my resolution, I want to make sure that matches, 1920 by 1080 at 24 frames. And it looks like I'm ready to render. So I'm just going to hit the render tab at the top and render animation. And that about wraps up this tutorial. Thanks for checking out this video, guys. I have several more videos like this in the works. So be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any requests for future tutorials that you would like for me to make, let me know down in the comment section. I'll catch you guys on the next one.